the Chameleon 64. It's a very nice cartridge, but you can also use it in standalone mode. And I have this docking station with two competition pro joysticks, um, a Dell uh, keyboard, a PS2 keyboard, and it's hooked up over VGA, and it uses an SD card. I have these speakers connected, and let's press reset. Now it defaults into uh, one of the cores. Uh, it's an FPGA system, and what I love about the FPGA systems is that it allows it to mimic in hardware different computers. Uh, of course it does the Commodore 64 and all sorts of uh, variants, but it also does the MSX, and let's press restart. So the core loads uh, the BIOS from the SD card, and it actually makes it into an MSX2 Plus machine with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is just insane. And it boots into the shell that I normally use on pretty much all my MSX systems. Uh, yeah, this is a, quite a bit of a weird hybrid because there's software for just about <laughs> any system it emulates on it. Uh, Commodore 64 software, MSX, uh, you can see Spectrum software, uh, Atari 800, 8-bit uh, 8 machine, uh, Atari 5200, um, PC Engine, uh, a lot of stuff. But let's go into MSX, demos, and there's just one demo that is just insane. Uh, if I press enter in this shell, it just uh, goes to basic and it uses and it loads the uh, auto exec bus. So let's sit back and see what it does. Now this is a bit of a demo inception. So it boots into MSX2. So it says it wants to downgrade because you want to run an MSX1 demo. <laughs> and by downgrading, they actually mimicked the Commodore 64 screen. They mimic loading in a game. This is this is an MSX doing this. And the first time I saw this is just awesome. <laughs> by 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 and now it just fakes an MSX one. It it loads the demo. Let's do it. The volume just a tad lower. So this is an MSX demo running on a Commodore 64 card. And it does multi-load from the SD card as well, because it just treats it as a storage device. So there's this ball thing going on. Okay, let's, let's see what this machine can do more. So I'll just remove the power from it. So it boots into... Um, and this is all. This this can also be controlled by joystick, so you can actually have it uh, without the keyboard as well. So there's a couple of cores you can load with it. Um, hardware test. There's an Amiga, Commodore Vic 20, for example. So let's see if I can almost make it a Commodore 64. Now you have a VIC-20 print. Hello, world. And it says, hello, world. So that was the VIC-20. Uh, you can actually also run software from it. And you saw in the, the screen that it actually detects that it's using the docking station. The sad part about this is this is actually quite a rare machine, which also makes it uh, quite difficult 
Uh, yeah, it also does Atari 2600. Let me see if I can reset it. Yeah. Uh, it makes um, it makes that not uh, a lot of new, um, uh, not a lot of new um, cores come out, and that development of the cores is actually quite uh, limited. So, but you can actually run Spectrum on it as well. Uh, yeah, I, I, need, I really have to find out the documentation uh, that I just put the core on it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I cover a 64 cartridge doing a spectrum of some sorts. Um, let's, I'll, I'll do a more extensive video on this uh, device a bit later on, but um, let's see. set to basic it is possible to use to load some some stuff launch core reset with cartridge oh gosh i totally forgot on the commodore 64 it just defaults into something that is very similar to a 1541 ultimate uh, options file browser that's it, the file browser um c64 Carts, the Beam Rider cart, and I believe if I just do this, I can just uh, put it in the cartridge slot, and it just runs. So running cartridge files is actually quite, quite handy. And I believe, yep, file browser. So uh, centipede. Yeah, so running the C64 cartridges is actually quite quite doable. Uh, but you can also run disk images, demos, um, Edge of Disgrace. And it does multi-loads as well. <laughs> it should it should do them. But of course, my oh yeah, it's yeah, it's actually uh, also doing fifteen forty one ultimate or fifteen forty one drive emulation. Um, so this this actually uh, outputs a very clear and nice picture. It's VGH RGB. And you can hear that not always the uh, the sound is. Uh, it could be that there's interference from one of the cables or something, but it could also be that the SID emulation is not 100%. Um, yeah, I have my uh, 15, what is it, my C64 reloaded. I've set, I've set that over there. Um, I can use that cartridge on the on the real 64 or the reloaded one as well. Uh, just to have it uh, more enhanced and it's yeah basically it's a very expensive 1541 ultimate uh, in a way uh, it also runs on the c128 uh, and it's just one of those storage devices and i just love this uh, this demo they've made a new demo this year i believe so uh might be worth checking that out uh, but this is just one of these awesome demos and to have it run on something that, uh, well, the only thing that's from the era probably are the uh, competition pro joysticks. Um, but yeah, that this runs is just awesome. I mean, and the compatibility of the C64 implementation is just amazing. The good thing is that you can actually put it in C64 NTSC and in C64 PAL mode. And for demos, PAL. And for a lot of the European games, PAL is just the way to go. But, uh, for example, a lot of the cartridge software actually originated in the, Amer in the Americas, in NTSC country. And if you want to play those at proper speed, you more or less can uh, configure this system in uh, NTSC mode. 
Not sure actually if, if, you, if you are able to do that when you uh, put it in a real CCT4. I believe it clones all the signals from the um, VIC chip and the SID chip into its own little memory. It's a very intricate device. Um, I'd love to know more about it. I obtained this actually uh, broken. The seller told me it was broken. I, I believe I've told the story before, but uh, they said it was broken. Um, they said uh, power light uh, would come on and uh, it was just broken. It didn't work anymore. And I thought, well, probably it's just a matter of reflashing it. And uh, it turned out that the power supply he gave with it, it was a very cheap power supply. One of these things with uh, two uh, USB uh, USB cables, uh, USB slots, and it just provided too little power. I mean, the light came on, uh, but it didn't provide enough power. And I also proceeded to reflash the cartridge with proper cores and stuff, and it just works. <laughs> you just need a two amp uh, power supply. A very yeah, a very good. And these ones actually are quite quite good. These are. Uh, they came with, I'm not sure what they came with, but uh, Light On is a pretty good brand. And uh, they provide enough power to, uh, to stuff like that. Raspberry Pi also runs great on this. They, they also need quite a good, strong power supply. So, uh, yeah, and I just love this Dell keyboard. I mean, it's the closest thing I have. It's the closest thing I have to a. Uh, to an IBM, um, and this is just uh, my go-to go keyboard whenever I'm able to hook it up on a PS2 adapter. Yeah, it's also possible to hook up a, a mouse, because this thing also does emulation of the Amiga. Uh, I haven't tried it properly yet. Uh, I may do a more extensive video. I've, I've done some videos on this in the past. Um, so you may actually want to go check those out and if you have any questions or, or you have some inquiries on this uh, uh, we're more than willing to uh, to, uh, to answer those but uh, yeah this is just a quick video on the comedians chameleon 64 while i work wait for my uh, ssd to arrive so i can import it into Transport it, tra transplant it into my uh, into my MacBook, my old MacBook, because it's getting a bit too long in the tooth and too slow. Yeah, the cow theme is also quite good. Yeah, I may actually do, I may actually do just a really honest uh, room tour of my study as well. Yeah, probably will do that next. Okay, Mark signing off, and I'll be back. We're gonna be here soon. I just love this. Of course, you actually need to set it in 4x3, but you know, who cares? Some do. <laughs> some do. Some really go mental if you put it out of you know, in widescreen, but yeah. This is actually the same company that makes the uh, 1541 Ultimate. Uh, 1541 Ultimate, no, no, that's a different one. Uh, the the re C64 Reloaded. And they also do quite a few um, uh, Amiga expansion boards. Very cool stuff. Anyways, Mark signing off, and I'll be back with another video soon.